This video will be going over two examples of interplanetary Hohmann transfers. One for an Earth to Mars transfer, as is in the animation on the right, and another for an Earth to Venus transfer, as is seen on the left. Now notice that Hohmann transfers can be used to either transfer to a larger orbit, in the case of Earth to Mars, or a smaller orbit, in the case of Earth to Venus. I'll be going over all the necessary calculations to do this type of analysis, including delta V, semi-major axis, and time of flight calculations, and how to plug these into Python. And I'll also be going over all the simplifying assumptions that are made in this type of analysis, and the next steps required for higher fidelity simulations. For the 36th video in the series, in this one, I'm going to be going over interplanetary Hohmann transfers. Now, I already have two videos on Hohmann transfers that go farther into the details of them, and I'll have links in the description, but I'll give a quick review in this slide. So Hohmann transfers are the most efficient two-impulse transfer between two circular orbits. And note that it's two impulse because in some cases, a bi-elliptical transfer with three impulses costs less delta V than Hohmann transfers. So let's go over the differences between Hohmann transfers that lower and raise an orbit. So on the left, we have the Earth to Venus transfer, where the goal is to go from Earth's orbit around the Sun to Venus's orbit. In this case, we are decreasing the semi-major axis of the spacecraft. So when departing from Earth, the thrust needs to be in the opposite direction of the velocity, so the spacecraft slows down its orbit around the Sun, and that's denoted here in the diagram. And once the spacecraft arrives at Venus' semi-major axis, it must again thrust opposite direction of its velocity to decrease the semi-major axis when it gets there. So as it's leaving Earth, it needs to thrust opposite of its velocity vector to slow down. And then once it gets over here to Venus, it needs to once again thrust in the upward direction, which is opposite to its velocity, to get into the Venus orbit. Now to raise the orbit is an opposite idea. So when departing from Earth and needing to get into Mars orbit, the spacecraft must increase its heliocentric velocity, and the thrust must be in the direction of the velocity vector. So that's shown here, where initially the spacecraft at Earth it needs to increase its velocity, so thrust in the velocity direction to raise its orbit. And once again, when it gets to Mars, it needs to thrust in the direction of its velocity again to raise the orbit to match Mars. So first, we need to know the velocities of the planets and the velocity of the spacecraft in its transfer orbit when it is departing Earth and arriving at Venus or Mars. Now, since we're assuming that the planets are in circular orbits, we can find their constant velocities with the simple equation of circular orbits, which is shown here that the velocity of a circular orbit at any time, because it's uniform constant, because it's a circular motion, is equal to the square root of mu, where mu is the gravitational parameter of the central body. In this case, that would be the sun, over r, where r is the distance from the sun to the planet, and that is constant because it's in circular motion. Now the transfer orbit is elliptical, so its velocity is changing as its distance from the sun is changing. So the farther away it is, the slower that it goes. But we can calculate the transfer orbit velocity as a function of its distance from the sun with the V's Viva equation. So that's shown here, where the velocity of an elliptical orbit squared is equal to mu, gravitational parameter in this case would be the sun, 2 over r, where r is its current distance, so how far is it at the very moment that you want to know its velocity from the sun, minus 1 over a, where a is a semi-major axis of the transfer orbit. And then you can really quickly solve for that, just take the square root of both sides to get that the velocity of an elliptical orbit is equal to this. So that's going to be the velocity, we're going to want to know the velocity here when it departs Earth, and here when it arrives at Mars. Now we also need to calculate the semi-major axis of the transfer orbit, which is actually a very simple calculation. So semi-major axis of the transfer orbit is simply equal to the average of the two planets. So in the case that we're going to Mars, as I've shown in this diagram, it's just how far away is the Earth from the Sun, plus how far away Mars is from the Sun over two, very simple, and then the same case for Venus. With this information, we can now calculate the delta V values for the Mars transfer. So the first delta V is equal to the velocity of the transfer orbit when it leaves Earth, minus the Earth's velocity in its circular orbit. And since we know the semi-major axis of the transfer orbit, we can plug that into the equation and calculate the delta V. So when you're here and the spacecraft is leaving Earth, the Earth has some velocity, which is this blue arrow, and the spacecraft needs this purple arrow, that amount of velocity, to escape and get on its home and transfer. So that's going to be equal to, and the necessary delta V in order to get that is going to be equal to the elliptical velocity minus the circular velocity, which is given from the V's Viva equation, where you plug in the semi-major axis of the transfer orbit, and for the R value, it's the R of Earth, because it's currently leaving Earth. 
and then you subtract the square root of mu of the sun over r of earth which is equal to the velocity of the earth and the second delta v value is equal to the circular velocity of mars minus the velocity of the transfer orbit when it gets to mars to my major axis so again here mars has a greater velocity when it gets to here as is denoted in the red arrow versus the elliptical orbit when it arrives so it needs to make up that velocity by thrusting in its velocity direction and that amount is equal to the circular velocity at Mars minus the elliptical orbit velocity which is equal to the square root of the Sun over R Mars how far Mars is away from the Sun minus again the V's Viva equation where you plug in the semi-major axis of the transfer orbit and the distance that Mars is away from the Sun and again notice that Mars velocity is greater here than the transfer orbit so it needs to raise its velocity again Now, the time of flight of the spacecraft to get from one planet to another is equal to half of the transfer orbit period. And you can see this intuitively in the diagram where the transfer orbit goes through half of its period. So it starts here, goes 180 degrees in true anomaly, and it ends up over here. And we know the semi-major axis of the transfer orbit, and that's pretty much all we need in order to be able to calculate the period of the orbit. And then we're just going to divide it by 2. So that's going to be equal to pi times the square root of the semi major axis cubed over this, the gravitational parameter of the sun. Now plugging all these equations into Python, we get the following results for the Earth to Mars transfer. Where here I'm denoting A as A is the semi major axis, but it's the same thing as R as I've been showing in the equations since it's, since it's a circular orbit is equal to this value. The distance from Mars to the sun is equal to this value. You find the semi-major axis of the spacecraft, the transfer orbit. You find the eccentricity of the transfer orbit, which I didn't go over, but you don't need it to do the calculations that I'm showing. It's for other calculations to make the animations. And then the time of transfer is equal to that equation. We get the velocity of Earth, velocity of the spacecraft when it's departing Earth, when it's arriving at Mars, the velocity of Mars, and the delta V required for each of the two burns, and then printing it all out. We get the results that the velocity of Earth would be 29.7 kilometers per second, and you need about 2.94 more kilometers per second to get into that transfer orbit. And the same thing is that when you get to Mars, you need about 2.64 more kilometers per second to get into the orbit, and that would take roughly 260 days. And here is a gravitational parameter of the Sun if you wanted to plug this in yourself and see the numbers. So there's a lot of simplifying assumptions that were made for this analysis, and if you'd like to go deeper into what it takes to do an Earth to Mars transfer, here are some things that you need to consider. So the first thing is that all this analysis was done using two body dynamics, so just we're just looking at orbits that are taking place around the sun. So there's no consideration of the other planet's gravity. So say when you're leaving Earth, the Earth is still pulling on you, and this analysis didn't consider that. And there's also no consideration of the final orbit that you want to get to. So in this case, we're just thinking we want to match an orbit that is equal to Mars orbit around the sun. But in reality, if you want to go to Mars, you need to capture into Mars orbit, and that's going to be dependent on what semi-major axis that you want in Mars orbit. And one way to do this would be through patch conics. So that means when you're leaving Earth, you get on a hyperbolic flyby trajectory, so you give yourself enough velocity to escape. And once you get far enough to the edge of the sphere of influence of Earth, then you switch that you're now considering a heliocentric orbit versus a that's an elliptical heliocentric orbit versus a hyperbolic Earth orbit. There's also n-body dynamics. So say when you're out in between the planets, the other planets are actually going to pull on you with their gravity. So say Jupiter is going to pull on you, it's going to change your trajectory. You also have to consider the escape direction, so you need to actually make sure that you're pointed in the right direction when you escape Earth in order to be able to reach where you want to go. And also, this isn't the only type of solution that you can get because Hohmann transfer just considers the most efficient way in the delta V sense, but there's other things that you must consider when doing space missions, say time of flight. So you can do a Lambert solution and you can create a pork chop plot of different, I want to leave I want to have a window where I can leave through these dates, say a year, and I want to arrive at these dates. So you can take a look at how your delta V is going to be affected by the time of flight and depends which one matters more for you. And I've also done uh, videos on Lambert Solution, which I'll have a link in the description to if you're curious about that. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, be sure to hit like and subscribe if you like the video and the comment that wh what you thought to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And for the next videos, as far as the orbital mechanics of Python series, I have a bunch of different ideas.
um, and they're in no particular order. So if you have an interest in seeing uh, one of these topics, just go ahead and let me know. I'm kind of thinking about graveyard orbits because they're kind of an interesting topic. Um, but yeah, just let me know if there's any interest in any of these because there's a lot. And currently, I'm working through a numerical method series as a prereq. I'm doing a lot of prereqs for it. So I'll be doing a principal axis rotation, Euler angles, and quaternions. And then I'm going to go ahead and start with the spacecraft attitude control series. So let me know also how much interest there is in that.